How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach us your decrees. Please join me in the opening prayer. Dear Almighty God, we thank you for your word and joy it brings us. Thank you for your hope it brings our world daily. And thank you for the love that allows us to spread. Please give our youth the courage to follow your path. As your word says, let no one despise you from youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So help us, Lord, no matter what our age is, to set an example for the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll continue now, if you would, to open our first hymn today. It's 509. Jesus saved him, all at least. Let us proclaim what we believe together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God. 
Good morning. morning. Y'all can hear me okay? (laughs) Hi, my name is Marissa Lewicki, and this is my story. I've always dreamed about writing a testimony. Ever since I saw my sister do it in 2014 at a youth trip we take each year called Pilgrimage. Now, thanks to some wonderful leaders of mine, I've been given that same opportunity. I'll talk more about them later, but for now, let's start at the beginning. It's the beginning of my fourth grade year. I was so excited. Bigger school, lockers on the wall, big playground. I thought elementary school was going to be so fun. Little did I know, it wasn't going to be all fun and games. I was only nine years old when I started to get bullied. Kids would pick on me for things I couldn't control, like acne. Saying things like, she's growing a mountain on her forehead, or let's play connect the dots, or just looking at me and saying a simple, ew, gross. I always tried my best to try and make friends, but they just kept excluding me from whatever they were doing. I always, once I tried to sit with a girl at lunch, but she pushed me off the seat, spilling my lunch, leaving me hungry, and sitting alone. I thought all of this was my fault somehow, like I had done something to deserve this. This feeling slowly continued throughout the rest of the year. Fifth grade rolled around, and I was dreading going back to school because how afraid I was of everybody else. I begged my mom to let me be homeschooled, but she didn't budge. The year started, and so did the comments again, except there was a new topic, my big nose. I was in desperate need of a friend, and thankfully God sent me two girls named Emmy and Nikayla. Emmy and I were complete opposites. She was a tomboy, and I was probably one of the girliest girls you could ever meet. (laughs) While Nikayla and I were two peas in a pod when we both found a love for theater. I was so grateful to find two kind friends, but sometimes I still felt confused and alone. Fast forward to November of that year, My sister, Brianna, got picked to say her own testimony and open up pilgrimage. So I went with my parents to see her do it. Once I saw her speak her testimony and saw everybody else speak their stories, something just clicked. As the night continued, I started to feel the best I had felt in a long time. Shortly after this, I started going to youth group with my sister. I was starting to see the path that God had created for me. After finally finding some girls that became my best friends and a youth group that turned into my second family, the rest of that school year and the summer following became some of the best memories of my young life. Unfortunately, though, this also became the calm before the storm. Middle school started off great. Everything seemed to be going surprisingly well. I finally found my friend group, and I started to learn about geometry and math and energy and science. We practiced grammar and English, and we learned about early civilizations and social studies, if I can remember. But I also learned about one more other thing, gossip. Turns out, just because you can't always hear people calling you names or making fun of you doesn't mean they're not doing it. They just might be doing it behind your back sometimes literally. I was standing in line one day, and I heard some of my friends, friends giving me compliments on what I was wearing that day. There was also another time when two guys just looked at me, giving me weird looks and looking me up and down, like I was unknown to them. All I was doing was waiting for my mom to pick me up in the car line. I started to develop anxiety over time, and I didn't want to do anything. It felt like a million voices telling me to dive headfirst into the shallow end. It was really hard because I didn't have Emmy and Nikayla in all my classes like I used to, so we didn't talk as much. Once again, I felt alone, and I didn't know who I could talk to. But God works in mysterious ways because that week at youth group, the topic was prayer. We learn no matter what you need to say, God is always listening. He may not answer right away, but he will always be there to keep you on the path straight past temptation. Temptation is different for everybody. My temptation was the voices I heard telling me to change how I looked, to change because they didn't like what they saw, 
and to change who I was and still am today. The bullies I faced for the longest time just kept telling me to dive into the shallow end, and I got close so many times. But because of everything new I would learn from my youth leaders and pastors talking about the word of Jesus Christ and relating it to my life, I learned how to step away from the pool of voices I once thought I was going to drown in. It didn't happen overnight or in a week or a month. I'm still learning every day how to just step back. What I do know is, is that no matter what, God will always be listening and be there to support you. I also found that God can be found in people and things you love. Like how I saw him through my sister when she brought me to youth group for the first time. And in my mom and my dad when I worked up the courage to tell them I was getting bullied. And to my pastors. And to my dance teacher and theater teacher. And most of all, Mr. Waylon Bell. One of the strongest, funniest, and wisest and kindest men I know. My story isn't over, but the chapter in my life has just about ended. So I leave you with this scripture, Proverbs 18:21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. I learned this on the night we talked about prayer at youth group. I will always remember this, as remember your words have consequences, because whether it is positive or negative, they just might change your life. Thanks for listening. You may remain seated. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
The first piece of scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of any more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. For strive first for the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's troubles is enough for today. All the children worshiping with us are invited to join us up front. Sunday in our church. Do you know what it is? Nope. It's Youth Sunday. That's right. So, do any of you guys play any sports? What sport? Volleyball. Volleyball. Basketball. Baseball. Baseball. Cool. So, have you ever had a big game or a big meet before? Were you nervous before this game or meet? Well, in the Bible, it tells us we don't need to worry about anything because God will always be there for us. So, there's no need to worry. Uh. It's from Philippians 4, 6, and somebody will be reading that later. Do you want to say a prayer before we go? Dear God, thank you for bringing us here together. Please help us to remember, when we get worried, there will be no need for it, because you are always there. Amen. Let's continue our worship through the giving of God's tithes and our offerings. Thank you. 
mistake. I reject the idea that God defines me and loves me. I do not find worth in my words. People tell me I'm special, but they are wrong. It's a lie. I will be lonely forever and never find true love. They say that? Jesus loves us and cares about us. They cannot be true because I am worthless. For so long, I believed in the distort idea that there is a hope and a future for me. Now I look around and it is evident. Jesus is not enough. For so long, I thought, true love could be found. But now I realize that no one will ever love me. I used to believe that my life has divine purpose. I soon realized life is empty and meaningless. No one can heal the pain, the broken heart, and the shattered dreams I have endured. God and his love fails. His love for me never existed. The healing purpose and love in my life I always sought was so far off. I have come to the conclusion that Jesus loves me. loves me. I have come to the conclusion that was so far off, the healing purpose and love in my life I was always sought. His love for me never existed. God and his love fails. can heal the pain, the broken heart, and the shattered dreams I have endured. No one. Life is empty and meaningless. I soon realized my life has divine purpose. I used to believe that no one will ever love me. But now, I realize that true love can be found. For so long, I thought, Jesus is not enough. Now, I look around and it is evident. There is a hope and a future for me. For so long, I believed in the distort idea that I am worthless. This cannot be true because Jesus loves us and cares about us. They say that I will be lonely forever and never find true. They are wrong. It is a lie. People tell me I am special, but I do not find worth in my words. God defines me and loves me. I reject the idea that I am a mistake. So in case you missed it while they were walking with those cards, what happens in that poem is that it begins with this idea that I am a mistake. And you read the cards in that order if you start with I am a mistake. It's a pretty heartbreaking poem about how life is meaningless. But nothing changed when we read it the second time, except for the order that we read it in. So the second time, we started with the end, which 
which is Jesus loves me. And when you start from there, when you start from the foundation of Jesus loves me, and you read those same cards in the opposite order, it's a very hopeful poem about just how meaningful life is. This is the second scripture reading for today. I will be reading Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. and I'm a senior this year at West Carteret High School. I have been involved in Fellowship of Christian Athletes, the First United Methodist Church Youth Program, the varsity golf, basketball, and soccer teams throughout my four years. Being in high school comes with a lot of stress, worries, anxiety, and for some, even depression. Everyone worries about what they're going to post on Instagram next, how many likes they will get, who will see what they're doing on a Friday night, if they will ace that test, and so many other things. It can make you feel as if you're not as pretty, cool, or as popular as everyone else. Social media doesn't always represent the reality of our daily lives. We do not see the negative things like getting denied from our college of choice, not getting a job offer, family struggles, or just the daily challenges of life. I will be the first to admit that I struggle with the things I just mentioned. These nagging thoughts are a part of what caused me to develop an eating disorder along with depression in early 2019. I watched through my daily life eating the absolute bare minimum, exercising every day at 5 a.m., including running three miles a day with an additional 30-minute workout. I did this because I did not love my body and who Mason was. I wanted to be like the girls I saw on Instagram with the perfect body and perfect life, whether they had it or not. Going through all of this and going through my recovery with my eating disorder, I've discovered many things about God and what His love does for us. For Christmas in 2018, my mom gave me a box of cards with Bible verses on them. It's on your bulletin. One day, one of the cards had a Bible verse, which is one of our scriptures today. It says in Philippians 4, 6-7, through 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The day I read this Bible verse, I knew everything was going to be okay, and God was going to be with me through the good and bad times. God is the creator of all things, including you and I. Do you think God only shows us the good things in life? No, he shows us what it means to go through hard times, like sickness, death, and sadness. But with things like sickness and death, he always gives us peace and understanding as to why these things happen. You just have to look and talk to God to get your answers. We all have worries and anxiety, but God reminds us that if we talk to him all the time and tell him what we are going through, he will help us navigate through these difficult times. In some ways, I am very thankful for the things I have gone through this past year and a half. It has really helped me see that life is not all about the outside image that may not always be reality, but just about spending every day doing your best to be the best person you can be. I am grateful because I have also grown a lot closer to my mom, dad, and little brother Davis, and most importantly, God. Although eating is still an everyday struggle for me, I have learned that I do not need to worry about looking like that next supermodel or eating that bite of ice cream. What I need to do is love the body God has given me not compare myself to others and live to the fullest I can while serving God and being the best person I can be. I challenge you this week to put down your phone for a few hours, read some scripture, go for a walk or run, cook your family dinner, play a board game, and spend time with not just yourself, but with family and God without comparing yourself to others. 
Hopefully you will find this time spent very valuable, not only to yourself, but to those you share it with. Thank you, Pastor Powell, Pastor Sarah, and Waylon, for giving me the opportunity to share my story and hopefully spreading a little light for someone else that may need it. Now, we all stand as we sing, it is well with my soul. Number 377.
uh, assist and walk alongside the youth ministry of this church. Let us read our benediction together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.